Welcome to the video, guys. Once again, Sadiq Khan is running around with his hands out like Oliver Twist, asking, please, sir, can I have some more? You might remember, just recently, the government had to bail out Transport for London because of Sadiq Khan's woeful management of TfL in general over the years, and of course, throughout the coronavirus crisis, where he allowed everyone to travel for free for about two months, absolutely destroying Transport for London's revenue stream and using any cash reserves they had to cover the costs. Well, he's back begging for more money now because there's a £500 million black hole in his budget and he needs to employ more police officers along with begging for more cash for cancels and of course TfL, which is laughable considering he got £1.6 billion from the government just last month. Well, the Express, along with a bunch of other papers, have picked this up, including the Evening Standard, who conveniently leave out anything the government says in response, destroying Sadiq Khan, as we will see in this Express article. It headlines, Sadiq Khan demands emergency help for London services in new Boris plea after TfL bailout. Sadiq Khan has called on Boris Johnson to bail out London's cash-strapped emergency services after a sharp fall in revenue sparked by the coronavirus crisis and his complete mismanagement of London in general, which is no longer up for debate. Take a look at what's happened over the last couple of weeks and then go back over the past four years and you get the full picture of London under Sadiq Khan and the shithole it has become. The London Mayor warned City Hall and other local authorities across the country had been left facing serious funding black holes as a result of the pandemic, which caused massive shortfalls in business rates and cancelled tax income. In the capital, that could mean cuts across the Metropolitan Police, London Fire Brigade, Transport for London and the Greater London Authority due to a shortfall of almost 500 million in funding. Oh, I wonder where that has gone there, Sadiq Khan, considering the government has been pumping money into local councils and especially London ever since this situation started. You might remember I did a video a month or so ago now talking about a Labour council that had run through all of the money and was begging for more in about three weeks, while other councils still had plenty left over. This is essentially the same thing as that, but they're using the London Mayor as the mouthpiece to try and get it done. Labour might not be in government, but they're pulling all the strings they can to spend as much money as they might have done if they actually was. Let's be honest though, if the Labour Party was in government now, with the coronavirus crisis, we would have spent trillions and trillions of pounds that we don't have and would have been living under austerity for the next 50 years. Mr Khan is demanding ministers step in to plug the financial gap, even though the government has provided billions in emergency funding for the city. As I said, they have put in a shit ton of money and he is still begging for more, because we all know the only thing Sadiq Khan is good that is wasting taxpayers' money. Take a look at his PR budget, for example. The mayor said he was taking an immediate reduction to his £152,000 salary, cutting it by almost 15 grand, and has frozen pay for his senior appointments at City Hall, which, if I remember right, are all on close to the same amount of money as him, so about 150 odd grand each, down to about 100 if memory serves. He said Londoners did the right thing to tackle coronavirus by following the rules, staying at home and helping save lives. But now the government is punishing them with a new era of austerity. No, you are punishing them with your piss poor management of London at the end of the day. The government is pumping money into it while clearly London Labour councils are wasting it at an incredible rate as we saw from a previous video that I mentioned earlier. Coronavirus has had a devastating impact on London's public finances which were in great shape before the pandemic. Yeah, and that's nothing to do with your management of London, that is for sure, Sadiq Khan. TfL fares income has dropped by more than 90%, and local business rates and cancelled tax income has fallen off a cliff. Well, if you offer TfL services for free, you gotta expect that you're gonna lose at least 90% of your income, let's be honest. This is the worst possible time for a return to austerity, just when we need to invest in London's recovery. 
recovery, as I've said and is said in this article, the government has already done that. Billions have been pumped into London. Use lot need to stop fucking wasting it. Unless ministers act, the current number of police officers will need to be reduced and it will be impossible to tackle youth violence or make changes to the London Fire Brigade that are desperately needed after the awful Grenfell Tower tragedy. So there we see it in Sadiq Khan's usual manner, threatening the government with cuts to this and that if they don't bail him out yet again. And as for his words on tackling youth violence, is he having a laugh or what? How many stabbings have occurred in London while this snivelling shit weasel has been the mayor of London? I would bet it's more than any other mayor in history, that is for sure. The shortfall in tax receipts is due to a forecast reduction in the number of firms paying business rates and householders not able to keep up with cancelled tax bills. Mr Khan called on the government to act on Mr Johnson's promise that he would not return to austerity measures to balance the books as a result of the coronavirus crisis. He warned that failure to act would jeopardise the Prime Minister's commitment to recruit 20,000 extra police officers. Mr Khan said, I didn't enter politics to administer government austerity and I will do everything in my power to persuade ministers not to force another era of austerity on local and regional government. Well, start managing the money that you're being given better because at the end of the day, you're all getting unprecedented amounts of cash to deal with this situation. Clearly, yous are all wasting it on who knows what. There might need to be some investigations to look at where all this public money has gone. I would certainly back such a thing. He continued though, whatever happens, I will protect the frontline services that Londoners depend on as much as possible. And it's only right that I should volunteer for an immediate pay cut in these extremely difficult circumstances and continue not to take any pension contributions. Yeah, a 15% pay cut for 15 grand is not really going to make a difference, is it? You complete an utter imbecile. It's just a little bit of virtue signaling like we have seen you doing a hell of a lot of over the past couple of weeks. Actually, if I think back to it, you've been doing that for your entire tenure. Let's be honest. We already know he's frozen the salaries of his shit weasels up there with him. We don't care about that. Mr. Khan will publish new budget guidance, which will outline the request for the GLA, TFL, Scotland Yard, London Fire Brigade, the London Legacy Development Corp. Corporation, Old Oak and Park Royal Development Corporation to report back by the end of November on how they could deliver significant savings. So in one breath, he's running around talking about how he won't implement government austerity, but tells all these organizations that he has some control over they need to implement austerity. Is this guy having a laugh or is he really just that stupid? With London elections due next year and the added complication of Mr. Johnson being a former mayor, the capital's finances risk becoming a political football. TfL has already received a 1.6 billion bailout as a result of the impact of coronavirus and Tory mayoral candidate candidate Sean Bailey has accused Mr Khan of bad management, which to be honest is not really an accusation, it is actually reality if you ask 99% of people. A government spokesman said, we have given London an unprecedented package of support to ensure they have the resources they need to provide services for the communities during the pandemic. The GLA has received an extra 18.5 million of emergency funding and an additional 1.6 billion for transport for London. This is on top of an increase in core spending power of over 88 million to 2.27 billion while the Metropolitan Police is receiving 2.9 billion in funding this financial year. The most substantial police funding increase since 2010. And considering, as we saw over the last couple of weeks, they are barely doing anything, I'm sure that money is more than enough. We have given London Council's £518 million in additional emergency funding as part of a total of over £5.3 billion of government support for communities and businesses across the city during the pandemic. So London has had a shitload of money pumped into it, Yet snivelling shit weasels like Sadiq Khan are there begging for more with their hands out, as I said, like Oliver Twist. We are working on a comprehensive plan to ensure Council's financial stability over the year ahead and we will update as soon as we are able. So, the government has got plans to help Council's as it is. Sadiq Khan and his demands are worthless yet again. The government, by the sounds of that, like I said, is planning to do something anyway to give these useless councils more money so they can waste it, which we all know is exactly what they do. So Keir Starmer
Obama hailed Mr. Khan for highlighting the pandemic's financial burden on councils, but appeared to have no plans to follow him in taking a pay cut. Of course, he didn't like that was ever going to be a thing. And you know what? It just talks about his salary there. We really don't care. So Keir Starmer has done nothing as the Labour leader. Take the Manchester United football player Marcus Rashford, who has changed more government policy than the entire Labour Party since the election last year. Maybe Marcus Rashford should lead the Labour Party. He has certainly done more politically than anyone in the Labour Party this year, that is for sure. Him, like Sir Keir Starmer, both stand no chance of winning an election, that I will have to say. But like me, I expect none of you are surprised that Sadiq Khan is up to his old tricks yet again, demanding this and that, and threatening to cut services here and there, as we saw with the TFL debacle at the end of May. We really need to spread it around London that Sadiq Khan has got to go. Maybe we need to commission some leaflets to post to every house in London, showing the shit show that is Sadiq Khan for what it is and what he's done to this city. That way, we might be able to swing some of the people who might vote for him blindly into voting for anyone else, because at the moment, practically anyone would be better than Sadiq Khan, that is for sure. Now, as always, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel, and my other social media links are down in the video description. If you want to come and support me on Twitter, BitChute, and a variety of other platforms, including my second YouTube channel. As I said, all links are down in the video description. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>